Welcome to Conversations with Garmami. This is episode 4. Our guest is Benjamin Kendrick. He's a 15-year-old judoka who has recently won two gold medals at the 2015 National Canadian Judo Championship. Ben won first place in the under-16 division and the under-18 division. As I think to myself sometimes, it's not all about the results as much as like how much you're enjoying it during the, the training itself. So I try to more focus on the training and just the present moment, not the future, not the past. Our guests include both of Ben's parents, his mother, Nathalie Gosselin, a 1996 Olympian judoka. I would say the last four years prior to the Olympics, it was just a living for judo. You live, you breathe, you think judo, you eat judo. Every single thing you do, it's for your next competition. It's for the, the Olympics coming up. And Ben's father, James Kendrick a former member of the Canadian national judo team. I just say, you know, keep the passion going and work hard. And I also tell him to learn and observe. And I think he's really good at that. He's got a keen eye and he's, um, he learns visually. So he observes actions of others, his own actions, what works, what doesn't. And he's able to make those adjustments and learn. Let's ask Ben a question. What does it mean for you to be competing in the sport of judo? What, uh, well, what does that mean to you? Well, I just... It means like pretty much a lot because I always fight and uh, I love to fight in the sport and I just love going out there and having fun and doing what I do pretty much my best, which is just to go out there and give it my very all. So it means a lot. How long have you been in this in the sport? I've been in the sport for about, well, ever like competing for about seven, eight, nine, ten years now. And in the sport as itself, probably about 14 years. So ever since, yeah, ever since I was really little. Can you, uh, can you tell us you, about your first experience uh, on the tatami, how, how that was? Do you, do you remember your first? Uh, thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, I think it was when I was like, I think it was when I was five years old. And I was at a like regional tournament here about half an hour away. And uh, I actually met my brother into the finals and we are was fighting an older category and uh i ended up winning all my fights that day except for the final versus my brother but it was a pretty awesome experience because it was the first time i really got to fight and have like good competition when i was at a young age so here's james telling us about his family and their participation in the sport of judo uh, the baseboard and judo clubs where i started and uh, then i moved uh, all over the country because my dad was in the military so I've done judo and I just absorb different techniques and styles from different senseis. So I lived in uh, Alberta and BC and Manitoba, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then I ended up in the National Training Center in Montreal with uh, Nakamura Sensei for uh, five years and met uh, Natalie on the national team who wasn't there. She was in Quebec City. Okay. Then I moved to Ottawa. She moved and then we ended up uh, together and then got married and then uh, had two boys, uh, Jacob and Ben, and um, we started them in judo just as soon as they could uh, walk. Uh, and later they played hockey and other types of things. So we just, we never thought they'd be doing judo. We just thought that's just a normal thing for a family like ours to do. So we would teach classes, um, like the kids' classes, and we'd help out and our guys were just kind of tagging along. Like you hear of rink rats, they were kind of like judo rats it's kind of on the side of the mat and just kind of you know doing all the exercises and they slowly got involved and um jacob competed uh for a while um he was probably the, well because he's two years older than ben and he's he's a 98 um but he also got really good at hockey and so at some point he had to choose one or the other and he chose hockey so he liked to judo he got his black belt and he was a national medalist as well in his age group at the time he liked judo, but his love and his passion was hockey, ice hockey, just for a whole bunch of different reasons. Ben played the same level, high level of hockey up to a certain point, uh, but his passion is judo. And I can't explain it. Two kids, same parents, they're just wired differently. And uh, Ben is the type of guy that uh, eats, eats and sleeps and breathes uh, training and judo. And he's just a Obsessed would be a word for it. His obsession is certainly a prerequisite to competing in this combat sport. 
Here's Natalie framing the context to his recent competition at the National Judo Championship. He went there as a national champ because he won the Super 8 close national in January. Again, that over there was a big surprise. He had a wild card. They gave him uh, the chance to participate two weeks before we found out. And then uh, he, just, he just won three matches by full points. So going to this past national in May, he was the defendant champion. So a little bit pressure. But I said to Ben, I said, everybody has pressure. You don't want to lose, but other people don't want to be beat up by a 15 years old, right? In the U18 division, especially. So I said, it all depends how you feel about the pressure, how you deal with it. Everybody has pressure. I kind of knew what to expect going into the weekend. I mean, the Friday I fought in the U18 category, and I knew there was some pretty good guys in that category. And I was looking at my, my draw, and I was saying to myself, you could do this, you've done it before, and you have to have the right mind frame going into this. But I ended up winning my three first fights to go into the finals. He was focused again and he went there. We were stressed out because U18 again, the, you know, there's lots of uh, good people in that division, especially 73 kilos. It's a normal weight division, right? And then, but he went in step by step, won his match one after the other, and then sure enough, ended up in the final. And then in the final, I knew that, you know, this guy, he's, you know, con pretty consistent, right? So I just, told myself you go out there and you do what you have to do to be successful and I went out there and I ended up winning so that was the first day the Friday and then the Saturday I knew there was a pretty strong category as well in my U16 category and uh, I just told myself you know what you just go out there and you have fun like you show them what you got because I didn't know what to expect to get a second gold medal I didn't know if that was going to happen or not so I had to go out there and just leave it, leave it at very all and give it my very all out there. So I did that. I won my first two fights to go into the finals. And in the final, I played a very defensive kind of tactical fight. And that's what won me my second gold medal at that Nationals. We coached him all along that way. And then I said, before we left, I said, James, we did everything we did, we had to do. I think we have no regrets. The training was there, the cardio, I did uh, his plan for running. Uh, the judo with sparitude, we did everything that we could do. I think he was prepared, so there was not a problem there. So if something doesn't work, then uh, I don't think it's because he had not enough judo or not enough cardio or not enough weightlifting. You know, the training was there. Psychologically, it looks like he was strong. So um, I was just glad that he, he did what he delivered. He certainly did deliver, and as Natalie alluded, preparation is key. Here's Ben giving us some insight into his general routine. Usually I have the sports program at my school, which I come here in the afternoon. And I have, uh, well, we do cardio drills here. We do all kinds of drills, which are pretty intense. And that's where I get most of my uh, my good good training in. And then at night, sometimes I stay here and I do another training at nighttime. And that's usually some good fighting and you know, cardio drills, strength drills, but also on my own time when I'm off the mats, I'm also doing my own dry land training at home and also at school in the afternoon. So I actually, I do a lot of training to try to get to the best that I can. And uh, that involves a lot of, well, weights, um, a lot of cardio drills by myself, running and all that to make one good fighter, which is, I find I have to make myself the best, so... So Natalie, what do you think Ben's greatest strength is as a judoka? Well, I think Ben is pretty lucky. I think he's got a bit of the gene of the, the two parents. So that starts, that starts well. Uh, also, he, he is a competitor. Like, I mean, he, he was, I don't know, you born like that because you, if he likes to fight, he, um, now he's just turning into crazy. He's like a, a judo nerd. I mean, he, he studies judo. He listens to all the video he can listen to. He watch all the high-level profile athletes. He knows, uh, he knows everybody by names. Uh, he knows their results. It, it's crazy. I mean, Ben, I think, is just a, he's a different mindset for sure. Even I would say I never had that, and I don't think James had that either. So he's really, I think he's even a step a few steps even ahead of us on this for sure hmm. I don't know I, it's hard to explain he's got a different mindset that's for sure I've never seen anybody and I've known judoka for a long long time myself included if you asked him uh, say in the last 20 years about an Olympics or a Worlds and who won what medal and, and even to describe the match 
he's the kid that can do it. At school, the teachers say he sits there and while other kids are doing whatever, Ben is drawing uh, make-believe 64-man uh, pool systems like in tournaments. And of course, he puts himself in the mix and he beats all anybody basically to make it to the final and he wins like who does that and he does like rep charge like those are pretty complex tables to kind of do but he was doing that even when he was 13. Um, he takes uh, really detailed notes uh, he's, a, he's kind of a cryptic writer he's very uh, precise detailed and he journals a lot so he journals how he's feeling he says he, he takes notes of what worked what didn't we didn't really tell him to do this stuff he just kind of picked it up and um, I think that's what uh, makes him a, a really good um, learner, and I think that's another key. So it's the volume of training, and it's the ability to learn and adjust and adapt. And you need the, the jam or the, the drive to do that all in the first place. And um, it probably comes from uh, a bit of Natalie and a bit of myself, but it's, it's mostly him. There's some fire in him. He's passionate about the sport of judo and certainly has a desire to train hard and compete. Let's hear more about his training routine. Beyond just the physical, what else do you focus on in terms of, do you do any mental training? And mm. can, can you tell us about yeah. the, some of the routines you do? Well, during, like, before I come on the mat, I usually have, you know, my pre, well, I, I like to focus with music, so I usually have my pre, you know, training tracks that I listen to, and uh, then I know that that just gets me really at the highest peak of focus that I have, and during training, I don't always focus just on the physique too, I focus also on the mental part. Say I get thrown, well, you know, I'm not going to break loose and get all mad about it. I'll probably just get back up, refocus, and I see it as the ways you could either sit down and pout about it or you could get back up and do something about it. So I focus a lot on, you know, mental keys and keywords and uh, stuff to get me refocused quickly because that's important in tournament also. But in training, generally, I try to focus on, you know, this this didn't work. What am I going to do to make it better? It's always to make it better and seeing it in a positive kind of way. You don't. Uh, uh, did you get nervous? You don't seem like you would. Uh, in training? Yeah. Or yeah. In in, in competition. Yes. In competition. Um, I for every fighter that there is, I find they have a pretty calm face, but inside I could feel and I could feel it myself too. I'm pretty. I could be pretty nervous before going onto the on the mat. But after that first fight opens up during a tournament, then the others just come, like, really much easier because you let all your, uh, all the stress out in the first fight, really. But I could tell I'm pretty nervous sometimes before going on the mat, but you just got to learn how to control that and uh, turn that into positive energy. Here's Natalie speaking on the value of hard work, determination, and passion. I think it's uh, it's something that you don't see in everybody, that's for sure. I uh, try to explain it. It's hard because for me it came naturally, kind of, because I really liked it and I enjoyed every moment of it. But you, you, if you don't like it from the beginning, just it, it's never going to happen. You have to like the sport, love the sport, and then things happen and it's easy. Kind of, you know, it's for sure. For some people, it's crazy. They think like you go and train three, four hours a day. But for me, it was normal, and I like it, so it was not difficult. As a 15-year-old, uh, what do your fellow, you know, your friends, your age, what do they think about you as as a judo competitor mm -hmm. and and uh, your your way of life? Well, what do they say about that? Uh, well, I guess most of my friends say, Ben, you train way too much, but. As as I sometimes, well, as some people say, is the lazy use the word obsessed to describe the dedicated. So mm -hmm. I use I use that quote a lot because I try to train the most I can and bring the best out of myself. And I guess my friends see it as the way um, they see it as if I'm overtraining and they don't really see the point of training that hard. But once I come back with those results and I tell them about it, then they're like, oh, okay, so that's what you were training for. And I was like... Not only that, but everything else, you know, it doesn't always pay off in one tournament, it pays off sometimes later. So I guess they could see me as a little bit of a, a fanatic of judo, but also, uh, you know, I work hard, so they, I find they follow me too when I work hard, so I'm like a role model. What, uh, so you, you come from uh, an, an interesting uh, family, because both your, your parents are mm -hmm. former competitors. What, when you step on the mat, um, what what goes through your mind when you see 
mom and dad uh, and, and your brother on the side, do, do you think about them? Do you hear their voices? They're, they're mm -hmm. your coaches, right? Yeah. What, give us an idea of what goes through your mind when you're competing uh, and it's a high pressure moment and you can hear your father or your mother. So mm -hmm. Bring us into that mode. <laughs> well, I'll try to do my best possible, but it's usually like they're there. I know they're there to support me and stuff. And usually I'm looking back at either my dad or my mom, whoever's on the chair coaching me. And uh, my brother's also in the background occasionally. But uh, I kind of like, you know, I try to get my zone focus. So they give me last words of advice and then they sit down on the chair. And then I know I'm up to go on the mat and fight. So I usually try to keep myself focused, keep myself composed and... Um, just go out there and uh, fight, and then when the mate comes, which is the stop, you look over to the coach and um, whoever it is, my mom or my dad, sometimes my brother shouts me some advice too, and um, I just listen to them, and then I refocus as soon as they're done talking. So, And then the rest of the fight is just I'm in my zone, and you feel kind of anxious going onto the mat, but you know it's a good kind of anxious because then that turns into the energy that you want during your fight. As a mother, uh, w when, when you see your son competing, uh, what, what goes through your mind? Just, just give, you give us not so much the judo competitor, but the mom. Yeah, like, it's whoa, pretty, it's whoa, stressful. What? It's it's very it's stressful because we watch and we have not really much control of what's going on. It's not like when we used to fight, you control the match, you kind of feel what's going on. But when it's when it's Ben who's over there, it's like okay, I know he's gonna find a way to to win, but. It's, it's still stressful because you never know. It takes half a second and he can be the one on his back and being thrown. And, but I, I totally have confidence that uh, he's good and he's going to find a way to win and then he's going to find a way to succeed. And so far, he's, he's proving us right, you know. And, and it's going to be hard at the higher level for sure. But so far, he's doing pretty good in Canada. So As a competitor, I kind of envision seeing the Olympics one day, you know, just... Uh, going there and doing well, maybe 2020, I'm not sure. But uh, I'd, I'd like to go to the Olympics one day, and that's pretty much my long-term goal. But as I think to myself sometimes, it's not all about the results as much as like how much you're enjoying it during the, the training itself. So I try to more focus on the training and just the present moment, not the future, not the past, because sometimes your mind gets over thought in those thoughts so or overthinking in those thoughts so i like to focus my mind on the present moment but definitely the olympics would be a goal one day here's james talking about the importance of international competition and pointable tournaments in the old days where you were gone for uh, you know almost six weeks seven weeks just doing different tournaments in between that different caps and it was more economical to fly over and just stay there than to keep coming back and forth that's that's what we had to do. The model now is much different. Um, the uh, there's many more, um, and this is what our son Ben is gonna, is looking forward to. That's going to be the challenge. There's many more um, pointable tournaments throughout the world, uh, World Cups and uh, different uh, events in each country that count for points. You accumulate the amount of points. And now who gets to go to the Worlds and the Olympics are people who are ranked in the world. It's kind of like a tennis ranking, like the Associated Tennis Press thing. So um, they've adopted that in, in terms of the IJF. And so the kids today are really professionally training all the time and they're always traveling. So it's, it's a little bit more of a challenge. Um, funding is a bit of an issue too because uh, the funding only kicks in at a certain uh, age level and um, that requires a number of points accumulated, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're uh, in, in, in Ben's case, he's probably about three years ahead uh, skill-wise to his age. Um, things are just happening for him faster. Is that an advantage to be? Uh, I I th I think it is. I think uh, I mean, and this isn't me, but I mean, people have told us, um, you know, very knowledgeable judo people that I respect. That uh, you know, people like Ben come around probably once every generation. Like there's a, a guy like a Nicholas Gill. There's a guy like an Antoine Valois Fortier. Um, ben may be one of those guys and it's just somebody who you can't plan it, it, you can't explain it, it's just that he lives, everything he does is for, for training and for judo 
And so it's advantageous because he's already accumulated, you know, technical expertise. The problem is he needs now to fuel that. We can't slow the train down. The train's pushing ahead. So Natalie um, and I, uh, since January, have been driving weekly pretty much to the INS, the Institute in Montreal. It's at the Olympic Stadium where they have the National Training Center. And, you know, Ben wants to go. And that's where his real training happens in terms of like the competitiveness he's not the best he's uh the youngest he's the one that's kind of looking up and uh that's where the workload happens so the good news is technically he's he's advanced the challenge is how are we going to fuel that and he's technically now at the point where he's getting past where natalie and i can help him which is why we're taking him to the coaches in montreal who i've grown up with and different ways and, and our national coach Nicholas Gill is uh, you know kind of leading the whole thing there and we're passing the torch because it's now finer detail and there's other technical things he has to learn to get to the next step so it's going to be an interesting next uh, five to eight years I'd say um, every six months he seems to uh, Ben seems to uh, improve um, exponentially like it's not just little improvements it's he's not the same kid uh, at nationals that fought in the elite eight back in January because he was 14 then now he's 15 in that six months he's really matured um, I would say technically um, physically to a point but more the the, the, the technical aspects of judo that um, you you only get by doing a training volume it just comes down to basic training with really really good people and then you sprinkle in all the other things like uh, mental training which is always important uh, physical training and development and conditioning but those are givens because everybody should be doing that if they're not eating well, watching their weight, sleeping, getting good diet, good support, all that kind of stuff. But it's that technical edge. That's the point that's uh, really hard to, uh, to master. And he's, he's really accelerating at that pace. Well, I think one of the bo biggest motivations is I ask myself, what would I be doing if I wasn't on the mat tonight? And I say, maybe I would be at home, you know, sitting on the couch, not doing anything. So I look at it as not as if I'm training to win all the time, but also training to, to train. Because if I wasn't training and didn't have anything else to do, what would I be doing? So I don't see the point of not coming to judo and not training hard. That's one part of it. The other part is I like training because it it's a place where you could suppress the unnecessary energies from your body that gives. So after that, I feel more relaxed. I feel better. And I just love to train because those two parts are two big parts that I like to focus on a lot so it's good what um, who are you right now you're training at the, the, the center in Montreal right? Mm -hmm. the National training center. yeah how, uh, give us an idea how how the vibe over there uh, is for you as a competitor and whether you feel uh, pushed uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the level of competition in house yeah all right so well as I first went there I kind of felt like you know a bit pushed around and like maybe this isn't, this isn't my place but I feel like that went away because now I'm more used to going and more and more and I know more people but I feel I feel a great push because and I love it because it gives me challenge and stuff the level of competing over there is pretty high and there's also coaches uh, coaches helping me uh, devil up too as well so and they're always giving me advice and stuff so that helps a lot too but I feel a good push from the people there and they just all encourage me sometimes so it's a uh, it's a good uh, good vibes so how important is it for you as as a high level competitor in the sport to be training amongst fellow high level is sounds obvious right but mm -hmm. how important is that elaborate on um well i find it's pretty important because uh if you don't train with the right people and the the people that are going to push you then you're not really, well, not necessarily going to get that much better. So I try to go with the people that go to the Olympics, and I get thrown here and there most of the time. <laughs> but um, I still get back up, and I keep going, you know. So the importance is because if I didn't train with those people, I wouldn't be pushing myself to the max. And I ask myself, why am I not pushing myself to the max? If not, why not? So I try to push myself to the max all the time. And... Uh, they they motivate me to to go hard with them, so it's a pretty important. What aspects of his game do you think will be refined uh, at the INS? 
Well, I think um, what he's improved on is um, his ability to do multiple techniques. He's always had a good base. Uh, and some fighters, if you know the sport, rely on one or two techniques. And they just seem to do that. If that's good, if it works. The problem is um, with social media now and with coaches, uh, the level of coaching basically improving. Um, people are kind of studying what you do. And so you've got to have other things in the arsenal and be able to apply um, different combinations of things in different situations especially when it gets tough I think the only way you can do that is through the volume of training and competing and actually fighting brawling sparring on a regular basis and Ben at first found it difficult but now he's able to go through uh, a training camp with the national team I mean these are the guys that are on the world team they'll be going to Rio uh, next year and he's training with them and you know in his weight and he's holding his own he's not uh, beating them, but he's, you know, not like it was when he was 14, just kind of tagging along. And there's nobody like that right now who's able to withstand the volume of training. And I think that's the number one key. It's um, being able to uh, really increase the volume of high-level training, um, and then the technical stuff kind of comes with that. We're working with Ben now more technically on... Uh, different finishes and making the link between uh, ne well, Tachiwaza, the standing techniques, and the Neiwaza, which is the, the grappling. Um, because at the higher levels, those uh, little details seem to be done very well. And that's what he needs to learn. It's more reaction. And it's just plain experience and takes uh, time. Lots and lots of repetition. He's also working with, uh, besides Nicholas Gill, the head coach, uh, Janusz Pulowski. He's our national training center coach, and uh, I have known Janusz for almost 30 years. He was on the Polish team, and we'd see him all the time. Uh, he was just a 65 kilo fighter, but the guys got two uh, Olympic medals, lost a split decision for the gold in uh, the 88 Olympics, which was in Korea, to a Korean, so there's a little bit of a bias there, and three uh, world medals. So technically the guy knows everything and there's a few other people almost of that caliber and this is who Ben is getting uh, coached by on a regular basis they will advise they'll tutor they'll observe they'll correct him um, and it's really black and white it's basically you did this wrong you need to correct it and Ben is a very visual learner so he learns by example he sees uh, by repetition what others are doing he learns through his own repetition and he makes the he's almost like auto correcting sometimes some things because it's so ingrained what uh, as far as advice what advice do you give uh, do you give him uh, in terms of uh, his judo career uh, and also uh, outside of judo how is he as a 15 year old kid uh, well we we try to support him. I try to support him as much as possible. I don't want to make any decision for him. Uh, like last winter, all winter, he was still doing hockey, judo, judo, hockey. And, uh, you know, like I told Ben, I said, Ben, it doesn't matter what you choose. Don't do it for us because parents are both athlete, uh, athletes. We, we both like the sports of judo. James is more like the hockey guy type the hockey dad. But I said, either way, you do it for yourself because I don't want... I, want, I don't want him 10 years uh, down the road say, hey, why did you make me do this? Or why did you tell me to pick this over the other sports? I want him to decide. And all we do is we support him. And then we just, uh, you know, try to coach him, but also to have, make sure he has a good environment and, and do what we can. I mean, it's just normal. We're parents, right? <laughs> uh, so c clearly th there's no pressure on... on I hope that. not. I hope not. I hope not, and I hope that if people would see that we put pressure, would, I hope they would tell us, mm -hmm. because I totally want him to be the one who decides everything, and I mean, he, for sure, we have to give him uh, some guidelines, guidelines, and then also, because uh, we've been there, done that, similar to what he does, so I'm you know, I think we, we can help him that way, <laughs> even if sometimes a 15 years old thinks differently, but... You know, so we just try to support him and encourage him. And, you know, if he has some down moments, which it doesn't happen too often, we just try to cheer him up. But it, so far, it's been doing very good, so he doesn't have much down moments. What gives me satisfaction is that um, they both seem to have, Jacob and Ben, have chosen um, their activity of choice. But they also want to make sure that their support is around. Because anything can happen, injuries um, other bad luck can kind of enter into it, but if everything kind of stacks up, um, et cetera, paribus, all things being equal, 
as time moves and you keep repeating the same successful kind of track, then uh, the success will kind of come for itself. So we're really proud that he's able to focus and um, he's got a plan. He basically knows what to do. And, and I see my role as a father, and Natalie would say the same probably as a mother, to be um, the tweaker, the guider, basically. And uh, we'll just remind every once in a while, refresh. So, uh, But now I'm at the point where, I mean, I, I was doing up to the Nationals since January and before like a lot of the technical stuff with him in terms of the fighting because um, I can still withstand it. But there's nights where I had to take, uh, you know, Tylenol after and it's just painful when you're a former athlete coming back in and the kid can move, like he can bend you over and mm -hmm. you've got to really keep it up. So the, the, the torch that way is going to have to pass pretty soon and um, if it hasn't already and that's where the training comes in with all these, uh, you know, national level competitors. Because that's his bar now. He's uh, he's ca he's captured U18, and now he's going to be fighting U21 most likely starting in the fall. Seniors as well, like that's kind of on the horizon, um, and that's just kind of the natural game plan, and, and just to keep uh, improving. What uh, one advice you can cons uh, consistently share with with your son? What uh, as for, for Junior? What do you remind him? Um, Always to uh, to work hard, uh, to have fun while you're working hard, because it's it can't be a, a labor or a chore. It's just uh, we don't need to tell him to go downstairs and start doing weights. We don't need to tell him to have his judo bag packed. At the INS, he's the first kid on the mat. He's the last one off the mat. And that's with all the full-time people there. It's just the way he is. He'd hang out there. He'd live there if he could, like on a full-time basis. But... There's a little thing called school he has to do and a few other things. So um, I just say, you know, keep the passion going and work hard. And I also tell him to learn and observe. And I think he's really good at that. He's got a keen eye and he's um, he learns visually. So he observes actions of others, his own actions, what works, what doesn't. And he's able to make those adjustments and learn. And, you know, we'll support him. And, I, and I've said that to both boys. As parents, we'll support, support both boys as much as we can. We made that conscious choice back, you know, more than a decade ago that um, we'd be the type of family that would support whatever we could for the guys in whatever activity they chose. So we've sacrificed a lot. But I don't, I don't now see it as sacrifice because um, some of our friends think we're nut bars because we're, we're always at the dojo. We're at a hockey rink or we're, doing, we're never home. We're doing some activity. But it's your passion, right? But that's our passion. Yeah. I, I see it as a way of life. But every once in a while, I, I kind of stop myself and I realize like there's there's networks and friends of people out there that that aren't like that, um, and even professionally, like it's just it's hard to explain to people. So that's uh, like you work, but then there's another piece of your life which is equally demanding and and uh, rewarding. But it's it's work, but it's not. It's a passion, but it's it's basically supporting the boys where do you see uh, his future uh, in, in the sport like clearly you know he's he's very successful mm -hmm. uh, where do you see him uh, in the next four to eight years if he keeps developing that way uh, I think 2020 Olympics 2020 he probably would be uh, he had a good shot he has a good shot at it but he's gonna have to move to Montreal train full time with the national team which he's already started to do like every week we you know we take him and then uh, in two years I could see him we, he's going to be there full time for sure and then you know we always have uh, the fear of injuries and stuff like that and financially we can we afford all those travel because he's going to be going everywhere he has to collect points and to be the top of the top 20 or top 30 in the world and then do all those tournaments that gives points so that's another thing so financially we'll have to find a way of, of getting sponsors but also you have to make sure he doesn't get injured he gets his rest he gets a good training good nutrition and all that what's the one key this is the last question what's the one key <laughs> advice that you give to him uh, consistently overall What's that one piece the of The one thing I always say, Ben, go out there, have fun, because the day you don't have fun, it's not worth keep going. Just go, enjoy, make it your day. And that's it. And he says, yes, I know. <laughs> Who uh, right now do you really enjoy watching? Which competitor do you enjoy? In the present moments, yeah. I enjoy watching Ilias Iliadis from Greece because uh, he's just, I find he's, 
my fighting type and I like his style of judo because it relates a lot well I relate a lot to him and uh, him and also Toshihiko Koga from Japan which is in uh, a fighter from the past but I also enjoy watching him because I again once again relate myself to fighting like him so those are all great, great judokas and uh, I love watching them Last question. A any mm -hmm. shout outs, any sponsors, any anything you what you want to plug or um well I'd like to thank all my supporters and uh really thank you for everything you guys do for me and um help me because without you I probably wouldn't be where I am today. And uh also uh shout out to uh Mizuno for being my judo sponsor because you guys help a lot too. So thank you very much. Thanks to all our guests, and thank you for listening to Conversations with Garmami. For more information, visit garmami.com. That's G-A-R-M-A-M-I-E dot com. G-A-R-M-A-M-I-E dot com.